What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special. You may have seen in the news recently that they're now working around the clock at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach to try to offload ships faster to try to solve the problems with the supply chain. However, if you look a little closely at the supply chain, you'll see that problems are getting worse, they're not getting better, and that really the problems are just migrating upstream closer to the source. And now we're not having problems with just getting them off of ships and onto shelves, we're having problems getting them onto ships and even getting the stuff made to begin with. Are you ready? Hit it. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jack Campbell, and I'm nobody special. And although we're taking steps here in the States to try to resolve some of these supply chain issues, like adding round-the-clock shifts at the ports to try to unload the ships fast enough, our problems in the supply chain are just moving further and further upstream to now we're having trouble at the very source getting this stuff made and loaded onto ships, let alone getting them off the ships once they get to here in the States. And unfortunately, that means in the short and even the medium term, our supply chain problems are going to get a lot worse before they get any better. Now, before we get into that, folks, I have to ask you to please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. It helps me to keep this channel growing, and I'd be forever in your debt. And now with that, we are going to shrink my big fat melon of a head and get into this article. This is on ABC News. Energy crunch hits global recovery as winter approaches. And folks, there is not good news in this article. Power shortages are turning out streetlights and shutting down factories in China. The poor in Brazil are choosing between paying for food or electricity. German corn and wheat farmers can't find fertilizer made using natural gas. And fears are rising that Europe will have to ration electricity if it's a cold winter. All right, what this article is describing, folks, is this energy crisis has taken our supply chain and our inflation problems and just amplified them. And unfortunately, we are looking at some really bad numbers on the horizon. And this is not just going to be isolated to semiconductors causing car prices to go up or having difficulty getting a new laptop because the Bitcoin miners bought all the GPUs. This is going to affect everything that you buy. And I'm not trying to push FUD here, folks. I just want to make the case that once the inflation problem hits the energy market, the energy is the common denominator that touches everything. And we're going to get into a couple of different articles here that show you how this is spreading to everything. Now, first one I want to talk about, and we talked about this a little bit earlier today in a video that I did about how zinc smelters in Europe are shutting down productions and how these base metals, these construction metals, are not being refined, are not being smelted to, to purity because the energy costs are just so high. Uh, now, we've seen energy prices go up here in the States a little bit, or I should say a lot relative to the States, right? Anybody who's filled up their tank with gasoline recently has noticed, and anybody who's paid their utility bills recently has noticed. However, what we're seeing here in the States, folks, absolutely pales in comparison to what's happening with energy costs overseas. Now, some of the energy costs overseas, the end users, the customers, are not seeing the price hikes just yet. And folks, if I'm wrong about this, feel free to chime in in the comments section down below. But it's my understanding that, particularly in Europe and China, power prices are fixed in that the end consumer, the retail purchaser, buys their power, but those prices are set by the government. So what you're seeing is a lot of the utilities are going bankrupt and the power sellers in Europe are going bankrupt because they're not allowed to raise their prices commensurate with the market forces that are making their costs go up. So you're seeing power producers go up. Eventually these power prices will hit the retail customers in Europe and in China you're seeing wholesale blackouts. Na I mean nationwide entire sectors of the economy are shutting out. Here's one case where it is hitting the energy intensive industries first and what that means basically here in Europe, metals, all right? A key index tracking the price of industrial metals, including aluminum, copper, and zinc, has struck record heights as soaring energy prices reduces their production. The London Metals Exchange Index on Thursday reached an all-time peak at 4,623.4 points. It represents a 35% jump for the LME index since the start of the year, while the increase is more than double from March of 2020 when the coronavirus pandemic took hold worldwide. All right, so you're seeing here aluminum, 
copper, and zinc. All right, so when you hear that, folks, that is the metals that stuff is made of. We talked earlier today about how zinc is an input into steel prices. It's used in galvanizing. Aluminum, copper, steel, aluminum, copper, folks, that is everything metal. All right, if these prices are going up, that is going to affect the input cost of anything that has any metal in it, which is just about anything. And this is being caused by these soaring energy costs. And we've even seen it with some factories actually shutting down. Rising oil and gas prices are once again putting pressure on energy intensive industries, forcing them to cut production in the face of spiraling costs and creating supply shortages. Reading further, electricity costs have also skyrocketed, causing Nurstar, a Belgian producer of zinc and other base metals, to cut production at three of its European smelters this week by up to 50%. We talked about that in my prior video. Zinc's value has increased by one quarter this week alone to reach a 14-year high at $3,944 a ton. Used to galvanize other metals, zinc rallied also on a cut in Chinese production, according to analysts who point additionally to the drop in LME stockpiles of the metal over the past six months, which shows no sign of ending. Again, this is talking about how the energy-intensive metals industry is getting absolutely clobbered by these higher energy prices and it's causing these energy producers to shut down production thus creating a shortage of the finished product which is driving prices higher that means manufacturers who make things out of steel copper aluminum zinc are all going to see their costs go up and this is adding to the supply chain difficulties and the trouble getting their product to market this means higher prices this means our supply chain problems this isn't just about offloading ships anymore. This isn't just about a shortage of truck drivers anymore. This is at the base foundry where the stuff, where the metal is made. Keep that in mind. And it's not just limited to durable goods. This is also going to hit food prices. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And I want to bring up this article. Fertilizer prices soar to all-time high amid production issues. All right? now, fertilizer production is an energy-intensive industry. With the pandemic, a drought, and rising energy costs globally, economists are calling it a perfect storm that has hurt supply chains for nearly every commodity, including fertilizer. Nutrien is the largest producer of potash and the third largest of nitrogen fertilizer in the world. They can produce up to 27 million tons of fertilizer annually from their plants in the U.S., Canada, and Trinidad. Over the course of the last year, prices of fertilizer have nearly tripled in some markets due to several factors, including the spike in natural gas prices, leaving global, global production in a standstill. All right. Over the course of the last year, fertilizer prices have tripled and global production is at a standstill. All right. When you hear fertilizer, you need to think food because your fertilizer is next year's food supply. Right? And we're starting to see that spreading even more. I want to point to another article. This one came from Bloomberg News. This is uh, covered in Foreign Policy News. Bloomberg News reported this week that Chinese authorities are imposing new hurdles for fertilizer exports amid growing concerns over surging power price prices and food production, a move that could worsen a global price shock and food inflation. Some Chinese fertilizer cargoes ready to be shipped are being held up by local authorities for additional checks or to obtain new export certificates according to people familiar with the matter. The supplies will either end up being sold on the domestic market or face delays in being exported, said the people who asked not to be named as they're not authorized to speak. So the Chinese see the writing on the wall and they're having their local bureaucrats throw up roadblocks to make it harder to sell fertilizer overseas so they can hoard it within their own domestic market because the Chinese are worried about the security of their food supply. Okay? So here we see it. The problem now, because of the energy prices, metals getting harder to make, fertilizer, production has outright halted in some markets, which means no fertilizer being made right now, less fertilizer getting put on the ground, which means less food grows next year. So now we're talking about food supplies being limited and food prices going up next year. Do you see how these problems in the supply chain are no longer just isolated to the port of Los Angeles or the port of Savannah? They're moving upstream to the very base of the, the fertilizer, the stuff that will eventually become our food, is now getting harder to come by. This is going to water down and trickle down into every corner of the economy. Everything is getting harder to get. 
Now that the inflation has spread to the energy markets, it is going to cascade and it's going to affect everything. There's, these are no longer isolated areas of the supply chain or small isolated markets that are having shortages. This is now going to affect virtually everything. My point here is not to spread FUD. It is not to chicken little. It is not to tinfoil hat. It is just to communicate the reality that global producers are facing and that it's starting to curb production, which means stagflation. We are in for a period of sustained inflation with low economic growth. Okay, Prices are rising, but production is shutting down. That means fewer goods and services being produced. That means less GDP. At the same time, prices are rising. Folks, we are into the stagflation. This is in the early innings of stagflation, which is the worst case scenario of the economy. So what does this look like long term? It's hard to say because we have faced stagflation before here in the United States. In the 1970s, we got out of inflation with Paul Volcker and his astronomical increases in interest rates. However, back then, the economy did not have the debt problem it has now. Back when Paul Volcker was hiking interest rates, the national debt was below $1 trillion. Now we have a $30 trillion national debt. So if we go hike interest rates the way we hiked rates in the 70s, suddenly the government becomes insolvent because it's no longer able to afford the interest payments on that massive mountain of debt. So this is uncharted territory, economically speaking. We have never seen an episode of stagflation combined with an astronomical, unsustainable debt level before. So there's really no telling where this is going to go. So long story short, the problems in the supply chain have now moved so far upstream that they are affecting the base material that things are made of, the metals, and the base agricultural commodities of fertilizer. And these problems are going to cascade down into the markets for just about everything. Thus, we are looking at a period of stagflation combined with high debt, which is historically unheard of, and there's no telling where this goes. Folks, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit that big, beautiful like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. It really helps me out, helps me to keep this channel growing. I would be forever in your debt. Until next time, live small and dream big.